Hey everybody, welcome back to another devlog of Sharks, my little Python game development project that I started out with about two, three weeks ago now. So today I have two goals. Number one, I want to have the player be able to interact with the environment, namely the merchant to obtain new projectiles, but also the whole interaction procedure will be applicable to many other things in the future, I hope. And number two, I am a bit sick of looking at these trees. They are kind of boring. So I've been thinking about possibly generating a procedural tree generation, but that is quite experimental and just something I want to play around with. So I hope you'll enjoy that. But I just got back from a little camping trip, which was really relaxing and it was good to get away from the computer for a little while at least. But before we get to the new features, I have to lay the groundwork. The script that I had is getting bigger and bigger and today is quite the rainy day so perfect for some code restructuring. Several hours later and I finally got everything to work again after I broke it in my big restructuring. All right, so let me just give you a quick overview. I'm not gonna go too much into detail about it, but I split up the game into five files at the moment. One is the main file that has the game class and the subclass is the play loop and the pause loop. And I also started to work on a menu loop, but it's not functional yet. And the game over loop, which gives the game over screen. And that's about it. Then we only have three lines of code to run the whole thing which is kind of cool. I've never done anything like that. I've never been so deep into object-oriented programming. So that's quite a new experience for me and I'm excited that I can learn some new stuff. And the same is true for splitting code into separate files. I've never done that before, but it's exciting. So we have our player, projectile, enemy, and all the other classes in this file. We have an UI file, which has the button class, and I added also the progress bar class, an overlay class, and the info class. And then all the settings and all the polygons and stuff is separated into the settings file. That gives me quite a bit more order and structure to work with as we add more and more new features and I hope this will be a good foundation to build upon. Okay, time passed me by again and it is already Wednesday and all I did was a bit more polishing on the menus and I added some wave effects but I decided that today I want to start ahead on the procedural tree generation. And here we have just the humble beginnings. I have a group of points that I'm defining. I define the four points of the trunk and then I have random points in the area above the trunk. And now I need to find a way how to connect these points in a, in a manner that makes the most sense. So I think I'll first try just finding the nearest neighbors and making connections like this. I got it to work. So this little loop here now finds the closest point for every point. And if we plot this, we get something like this, which draws the lines between the closest points. However, if we randomize this a bit, you can see that this is not really useful by itself. Uh, Thursday. Hmm. This week is almost gone and I spent quite a few hours on these trees and I'm just not very happy with them. Still nothing that looks like it fits in the environment. Let me show you. To improve the algorithm finding the closest point, I added a bit of a weighing function here, which weighs the distance in X more than the distance in Y, which means that if the point is far enough away in X, it will prefer connecting to the next point in Y. And that helped already a little bit, as you can see here, we now have kind of branches going down towards the trunk. Let's refresh this and get another example like this. There are still some outliers like this, which I would like to connect the other way around. But right now I always have them connect from the top down. So things like this are not considered. 
But I thought, okay, this goes into the right direction. So I went on to refine this a bit further. And on top of the distance weighing dependent on the axis, I also weighed it a bit more if it goes towards the center or towards the exterior of the tree. And then this is kind of something I ended up with, which, uh, yeah, is still quite far from satisfactory. And then at this point, I got a bit frustrated and decided, okay, how about we keep it simple? We don't do any branching. We just connect all the random points back to the center. And this is what I ended up with, which on first glance didn't look too bad. We have patches of leaves. They're all connected to the center. And if I make the leaf patches big enough, it will cover up any kind of weird effects. And then finally, I tried to improve the branches. And instead of just using lines, I used polygons that get narrower towards the branches. And I also refined the placement of the points a bit more. Now we actually start from a grid of points and disturb it rather than generating completely random points from scratch. And it doesn't look terrible, but it does not really fit the environment, does it? So let's generate a couple more examples here. By themselves, I think the trees look passable, but with the tiles surrounding them, I think they do look a little bit too detailed. All right, let's stick with this for now. And now let's focus on the other big thing I want to do this week, which is the whole interaction process. And I got distracted again. Uh, this time I wanted to make the menu a bit nicer, so I spent a little time working on a temporary logo. But it does look a bit more like a game now, doesn't it? Anyways, before we move on, I actually do have a few errands to run now. I got a bit of a head start on the boat here. So before we had a landing function that would get activated if the boat makes contact with the land. And at that point I would give the player their projector reward. But now I want to make this dependent on an interaction. So I introduce this interact function which does the same thing and then sets the interacted state of the boat to true. And on top of that once we have landed I don't start the animation unless the interacted state is also true. So the boat will now wait to be interacted with. For the player, I added a check environment function, which takes a list of interactables, in my case, only the list of boats, which is only one, and if the interaction key is pressed. And we loop over all the interactables in the list, and if they are closer than the action box distance, we are in range. And if the key is also pressed, we call the interactables interact function. And one last thing that happens in the actual play logic is that if there is interactables in the game, like in this case, if there is boats, we call the player a check environment function. The boat is on its way and it should stop here. Okay, so if we get close enough, we should get, yes, the in range print in the, in the terminal. And then if we hit E, Ooh, oh wow, we could do it twice. Okay, that's a bug, and this is another bug. <laughs> oh no, the boat is slowly drifting out of range. Oh my god, I'm so sorry. Oh no, oh no, I think this is broken. Okay, okay, let me fix some stuff here. I am getting in range, and interact only once. The boat turns around and leaves, wow. Nice. Okay, this is very simple implementation, not very generalizable at all, but it's our first interaction action. <laughs> I'm kind of happy about that. Okay, I want to do one more thing here, and that is a little bit of an indication that we are able to interact with something. Here we go, I cooked a little something up. Let's see if this works or what this looks like. Oh, crash. 
Way! Look at that. It doesn't move with us yet, but we have a little E coming up when we are in range. Yeah, it's moving a little bit, but only whenever it blinks, because every blinking is actually a new instance of this tooltip class that I just wrote. Okay, let's hit E, and it stops blinking. And we got our projectiles, and the new round starts. Awesome. All right, that's gonna be it for this week's devlog. I'm not sure when the next one will be out because I have some business travel to do over the next few weeks and month actually. So I'll try work on it whenever I have some time, but I'm not sure if I'll be able to put out another video in the next few weeks. Anyways, thank you so much for watching and I'll catch you in the next devlog of Sharks.